name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Now we're glad to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. We appreciate your presence. We welcome any visitor that might be visiting with us today. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the next hour we can be an inspiration to you. And you that are out in the radio listening audience, if you know of a shut-in, a friend that would be blessed by this gospel program today, if you would call them on the phone, have them to tune in to the station where you're now listening and get the Northside Baptist Church Hour. We'll try to be a blessing to them. If they're shut in, you'll be doing them a real favor as well as us. So we appreciate you that are present here and you that are listening in in the vast radio listening audience. Now at this time, we'll turn the service over to Paul and he'll direct the singing. And what he has lined up for us, I'm sure, will be a blessing to our hearts. So Paul, at this time. I want y'all to sing along with the choir this morning as sang Christmas songs. Joy to the world, the first Noel, the angels did say.
You know, it's been my privilege to have been to Bethlehem some nine different times over the years. The little city of Bethlehem is one of the most beautiful little towns there in the Middle East. When we make our Holy Land tour, I always look forward to going to the little town of Bethlehem and stand beside the road and see some of the caves back in the uh, side of the hill there. And then there's a cave there with a huge church built over the top of it a cave where they said Jesus was born and we always visit that cave and it's very touching to do so and I always look forward to going to the little town of Bethlehem it's not very far out of Jerusalem and it's a beautiful clean little village and there's something about it really thrills your heart to visit the little town of Bethlehem Lord willing we'll be going back again in March of next year that's only just a short time away now we have our brochures for our tour, but time is running out. If you'd like to go with us while well, you get in touch with me right away, we can still make plans for you to go. Maybe some of you are thinking about a Christmas present for your parents. Wouldn't that be wonderful to send them to the Holy Land? Some of you out in the radio listen audience, maybe your pastor's never had a chance to go to the Holy Land. It's equivalent to a year in the seminary at least. And it'd be wonderful if you could send your pastor or your pastor and his wife no greater thing could you do for the man of God than to send him to the Holy Land. Be something that you'd always appreciate so very much. If you'd like to have a brochure, you get in touch with me. We have also our beautiful calendars. We're sending out the 1983 calendars. Very beautiful. If you don't have a calendar, then you request it. We'll send you a calendar. We most certainly appreciate the beautiful Christmas cards we're receiving from some of you. May the Lord bless you. They always thrill my heart. Uh, the older I get, I guess, the more I seem like I really get thrilled about Christmas time. Used to, when I was a little boy growing up, I could hardly wait for Christmas. And I guess as I grow older, I still get thrilled about it. Something about these Christmas carols. And this time of the year, when things are kind of dead, you know, as far as vegetation and leaves and so forth, cold weather's on, then Christmas time's a time to kind of get uplifted. And it helps people to kind of get thrilled and uplifted at this time of the year. And we always look forward to it. And we should. Because this is the time of the year whenever uh, we celebrate the birth of our dear Lord. We don't know the exact day. We can't say he was born on the 25th. We don't know for sure. But there's one thing certain. He was born. And that's why we celebrate Christmas time. Because our Lord was born on the earth about 2,000 years ago. Now remember the service tonight at 6 o'clock. I hope you'll be here. And then Wednesday night at 7.30. So Paul again at this time. Choir singing now. Song entitled, It Came Up on a Midnight Clear, and O Come All Ye Faithful.
everybody's singing songs now entitled Silent Night, Holy Night, and Away in the Manger.
want you to take your Bibles and turn to three different places in the Word of God. I'm reading first of all from Isaiah chapter 7, then Matthew chapter 1, and Galatians chapter 4. Isaiah chapter 7. You know, a lot of things happen around Christmas time. Some things are funny, some are sad. I was reading about this little boy out in the dry goods store. There's a lot of people in the store and crowded. And he was screaming at the top of his voice, I want my mama. I want my mama. And the people felt sorry for him. And every time, well, when the people would come by, a lot of them would give him money. And he just kept crying and he had his pockets full of money. I want my mama. Someone came up, a little fellow, and said, Sonny boy, I know where your mama is. He said, shut up. I know where she is. So he had a shy way of getting his pocket full of change. And a lot of things happen, you know, around Christmas time, I guess. It's funny like that. Don't you children be trying anything like that. You'll have to get a spanking. Now, Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. I'm going to speak today on the virgin birth of our dear Lord. The greatest birth that ever took place on this earth was the birth of Jesus Christ. He was virgin born. He was very God. He was the God man. He was born king of the Jews. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, it's page 719 in the original Schofield reference Bible. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. That word Emmanuel means God with us. Now this was prophesied 742 years before it ever came to pass. Now turn to Matthew chapter 1. I'm reading from page 994 in my Bible. Matthew chapter 1. I begin reading with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the, by the Lord, by the prophet, spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Now if you notice here, he quotes what I read in Isaiah. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did his angel until after Jesus was born. She was just as much a virgin after the birth of Jesus as she was before his birth. Now Galatians chapter 4 and one verse of scripture, page 1245, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. It says, now when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. Now Jesus Christ was born... On scheduled time, at the very exact day, the very exact hour, the very minute that God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost had planned the birth of Jesus back before God created man and put him in the garden, Jesus Christ came. God knew exactly when he would come. He came on the exact hour. He was born in the place God said he would be born in the little town where God said he would be born by the prophet. And Jesus came and was born. The greatest birth that ever took place on this earth. There a man 
a child born on this earth by a virgin, a young Jewish maiden that had never known man. She was overshadowed by the Spirit of God and conceived of the Holy Spirit and gave birth to the Son of God. I want to speak to you today about the virgin birth of our dear Lord. There are several things about it because it is the greatest happening, the greatest birth ever happened on the earth. And there are several facts about it I want to point out to you. Number one, the birth of Jesus Christ was a predicted birth. That is, before it ever happened, the prophets tell us about it in the Bible. It was predicted that he would be born in this manner. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Here in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, you have prophecy not only pertaining to the first birth of Jesus, or that is the birth of Jesus Christ, but also his second coming down to the earth, which is yet future, to take over the governments of this world. He's called the Prince of Peace. And so Isaiah tells us about the birth of the Son of God here. Then we find the great prophet Micah. Micah, a man of God, wrote in his book, in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, and points out the exact spot where Jesus Christ would be born. Now Micah did this many, many years before the Savior was ever born upon the earth. In Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, it says, Thou Bethlehem Ephratar, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruled in Israel, whose going forth hath been from old from everlasting. So Micah, the great prophet of God, points out the exact spot where Jesus would be born. Now you must remember that prophecy must be fulfilled. Every jot and every tittle, every prophecy in the Old Testament must be fulfilled. And Jesus fulfilled everyone pertaining to him, literally and minutely. Now you must remember that Mary and Joseph lived in Nazareth, a poor little village. The people there were very poor. Joseph was a carpenter. And Mary was expecting this child. And they were some 65 miles away from Bethlehem. Now God was going to see to it that this baby be born in Bethlehem. Here they were, very poor. Better than 65 miles away from the place where he is to be born. But somehow or another, it had to be brought about. The scriptures had to be fulfilled that Jesus be born in Bethlehem. So we find the old king issued forth a decree that people must go and register. They must pay their tax. Now Joseph happened to be from the household and lineage of David. He could not register there in Nazareth or Samaria or any other town, not even Jerusalem. Joseph had to go all the way to Bethlehem that was the house of David, the place where David was born, rather. And he had to go there to register. That was the law. It was required. Now here was Mary expecting a child at any minute. Yet they had to make this long journey. No doubt she rode a little beast on the way from Nazareth over to Bethlehem. And they trotted along the way. Maybe it took them some two or three days to get there. But they finally arrived in the little village, beautiful little village of Bethlehem. And when they arrived on the scene, other people had come from all around for the same purpose, that is to register and to pay their tax. And Mary said to Joseph, Joseph, I believe this child is about ready to be born. And Joseph hastened to the inn. He said to the innkeeper, he said, uh, my wife is expecting a child. And I need a place for the child to be born. Would you let me have a room here in the inn? And the innkeeper said, I'm sorry. We're all filled up, sir. We don't have a room left. But he said, it's urgent. My wife is expecting a child. And the child is about ready to be born. We need a place. And the innkeeper said, I'm sorry. But said, I'll tell you, there's a stable down there that's empty. 
why we keep the animals. If you care to go and use that stable, you're welcome to it. Joseph took Mary and they went to this little cow stall, a little stable here where they kept the animals. And there Jesus Christ was born in a cow stable. And there was a little trough for manger there where they fed the animals. And there when the baby was born, they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and placed him in that little manger. That's the way God came to this earth. Born of a virgin, born in a cow stall and placed in a manger. So we find the exact place. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 2 verses 5 and 6. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judah. For thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. Now here we find these wise men. Probably from Saudi Arabia. Saw the star. And they followed that star. And then when they came near, they found out from Herod and some of the people where he was to be born according to the Bible. And they said, the prophet said he is to be born in Bethlehem. And so these wise men made their journey on to Bethlehem. And as they journeyed, that star moved above them and right over the place where he was to be born. It became still. And they knew that was the spot. And they went there. And they found the child and worshiped the Son of God. So it was a predicted birth. The Old Testament said he would be born and be born in this manner and at this particular spot. Secondly, it was a miraculous birth. This was a miracle. One of the greatest miracles ever performed. The Bible said here in my text in Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 through 20. Now the birth of Jesus Christ on this wise... When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, that is engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph being a just man, a saved man, a justified man, not willing to make her a perfect example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary. Thy wife, for that which conceived in her, is of the Holy Ghost. This was a miracle she conceived of the Holy Spirit. There's never been a child born on this earth before or since without the agency of a father. And here we find this one born by the Holy Spirit and a virgin gave birth to the Son of God. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 35... And the angel said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So it tells you how it came about. It was a miracle performed by the Holy Spirit himself. A miracle, one of the greatest ever performed in the history of mankind. Now, number three, let's notice the virgin birth itself. In Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, in my text, it said, The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. There the prophet said it is a virgin birth. Now, in the modern translations today of the scriptures, the liberals, the modernists, and infidels, in their translations, they have left out the word virgin. That's attack to the devil. They said a young woman shall conceive and so forth. That can mean any kind of a woman. But when you leave out the word virgin, that is the attack to the devil against the word of God. If you have a book called the Bible that don't have the virgin in it here in Isaiah 7, 14, throw it in the trash can and get you a Bible, the right kind of a Bible. The devil today is filling the land with all kind of rotten translations to deceive mankind. You be sure and stick by the old book of God, the old King James Version. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which been interpreted as God with us. So here we find then that Matthew tells us a virgin shall be with child. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 25, the Bible said Joseph, after he took her to be his wife, he knew her not. 
till she had brought forth a firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. In other words, he married her, but they did not live together as husband and wife in this respect until after Jesus was born. After Jesus Christ was born, as I stated earlier, she was just as much a virgin then as before, and then they began to live together as husband and wife, and God gave them other children that were born into the family or after the birth of Jesus. Now in Luke chapter 2 and verse 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. So when he was born, the virgin-born son of God, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and placed in the manger. Then we come to the next thought, and that is it was a holy birth. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 35, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore so that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. This was a holy birth. Holy of God. This was God being born in flesh upon the earth. This was God coming down in the form of a baby to grow up on the earth and die on a cross for the sins of mankind. It was a holy birth. No person can go to heaven denying the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. That's why these liberals and infidels and modernists that deny the virgin birth of Jesus Christ will not be going to heaven when they die. They'll go to a place called hell according to the Bible. And then we find number five, it was a lowly birth. Now the Son of God was not born in a house. He was not born in a hospital. He was born in a stable, very lowly. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 7, it tells you there that he was born in a cow stable, not in a nice, beautiful hospital where most babies are born today, but in a cow stall. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 12, this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Now the manger was a place where they placed the food for the animals. That was his cradle. That was his little bed, if you please. Now today, when babies are born, they have their bassinets and little beds and so forth to place them on. But Jesus, he was placed in a manger, in a trough where they fed the animals when he was born. He was wrapped in just everyday swaddling clothes. He didn't have beautiful little clothes to be placed on his little body when he was born. In this day, respected mothers many times are given showers. And they have many beautiful little clothes and blankets given to them, little shoes, little caps for the little one when it comes, but not Jesus. They took some old swaddling clothes, just everyday clothes they wrapped around their bodies, and there they made him a little bed and placed God in that manger. Now think about God coming down from heaven to the earth and being born in a place like that. It's a lowly birth. Now in Luke chapter 2 and verse 16, it said, And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph, the baby light in a manger. And in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, In fullness of time, God saw that this happened exactly like it was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Then we come to thought number 6, and that is it was a royal birth. This, this wasn't just an average, everyday birth. It was a royal birth. In Matthew chapter 2 and verse 2, when they came seeking for Jesus... They said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. These wise men came to worship the king of the Jews. Now the Son of God was born a king. He was born the king of the Jews. And then we find in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6, And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a Savior, that shall rule my people Israel. Now when Jesus came the first time, he was rejected by Israel. But when he comes the second time, he'll be received by Israel and he will rule God's people Israel, God's chosen people during the millennium. That'll be the fulfillment of that scripture. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He's the Lord. He's coming back as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. 
In John chapter 18, verse 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Pilate asking Jesus this question when they was tried him to crucify him. Pilate said, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I'm a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone is of the truth, heareth my voice. Jesus said, You said it. You have the answer there. Yes, I'm born king of the Jews. I came into the world for this purpose. And Jesus himself did not deny that he was the king of the Jews. But the Jews rejected him. They said, we're not going to have this man to reign over us. And they crucified their king. But as the day coming when they'll recognize him and weeping well and accept him when he comes a second time. Then we come to thought number seven. And that is it was a beneficial birth. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus Christ is the Savior, the only Savior. There's no way that you can be saved apart from Jesus Christ. There's no other name given unto him among men whereby you must be saved. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he that shall save his people from their sins. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus said, no man comes unto the Father except by me. So there's no way you can go to heaven apart from Jesus Christ. We have all kind of religions in the world today, but the only way you can get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You can't get there by keeping the law. You can't get there by being good. You can't get there by joining the church. You can't get there by making new resolutions. You can't get there by joining some club or some organization, some worldly organization. The only way you can get to heaven is to repent of your sins and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's the only way. There's no other way. There may be some good uh, churches, and we know there are. Some may be some uh, uh, fairly good organizations on there set up by man. But they'll not get you to heaven. The only way you can go to heaven is to repent of your sins and receive Jesus Christ by faith into your heart and become a child of God in that matter. That's the only way you can get in. It's a beneficial birth. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse uh, 5 verse 4, chapter 4 and verse 4, it tells you that in due time, God would send his son to the earth to redeem us that we might be saved and delivered from the curse of the law. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15, Paul said this is a faithful saying and word of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Paul said of whom I am chief. So Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. Came born of a virgin into the world to save sinners. I saw this in a little periodical the other day uh, and it, it kind of uh, fascinated me to a certain extent, and I want to pass it on to you because it's a, Christ a Christmas alphabet. And I want you to listen closely as I pass it on to you. And from each letter in the alphabet, you find something that, of course, can be applied that's beneficial, that has a meaning of Christmas and the coming of the Lord. The letter A is for the angel shining bright, telling of Jesus that first Christmas night. The letter B is for Bethlehem, crowded and old, the birthplace of Jesus, by the prophet foretold. C is for cattle, that manger his bed, that troth for his washing, God's star overhead. D is for David, his long ago throne, God promised forever to Jesus alone. E is for the east, where men saw the star and rode on their camels to follow it far. F is for frankincense, mirth and fine gold, that the wise men gave Jesus, as Matthew, as Matthew told. G is for God, for God, who so loved everyone that he sent us from heaven his only beloved son. H is for Herod, whose murderous scheme were told to the wise men and Joseph in dreams. I is for infant, taken by night with his mother far from that weak, wicked king's sight. J is for Joseph, quiet and just, who obeyed all of God's orders with absolute trust. K is for the king of the Jews to be. But we worship him now, said the wise men three. L is for love that brought him to earth and made him forever our brother by birth. M is for Mary, his mother, 
So brave and believing God's faithful, mighty to save. In is for the night, most holy and still, when heaven proclaimed peace to men of good will. Oh, it's for Omega, it tells Jesus' station, with Alpha beyond, before all creation. P is for prophets who saw Jesus stolen in visions of Bethlehem, Calvary, and glory. Q tells how quickly the shepherds who heard hastened to act on the heavenly word. R says rejoice with God's friends old and new. Mary the shepherd, the wise men, and you. S means salvation prepared by the Lord and our Savior whom Simon and Anna adored. T says to tell and good tidings all like the shepherds who told of Christ in the stall. U stands for us, for us to God has given the child born of Mary, the son sent from heaven. V means the virgin from earliest ages, pictured in stars and prophecy pages. W is for wonderful, that the Lord's name for with wonderful works and words he came. X is for Christ, when in Greek it is read. He your Savior and Lord, the angel said. Y is for yes to all God's ways, like Mary whose eyes fill with spirit and praise. Z is for the zeal that burning God's son from his childhood years Till his work was done. I wonder do you know him as your Savior? From A to Z we have these things said about our wonderful Savior. I'm glad that he was born about 2,000 years ago. He's our Savior and our Lord. And he came down to this earth on that first Christmas morning that we might receive him as our Savior. He's coming back again one of these days to take his people home. We are pilgrims down here traveling this way only one time Growing older day by day, many of us have seen many Christmases come and go. Beloved, one of these days we're going to see our last one. But where are you going after you see your last Christmas? Would you go to heaven if you should die now? But I'm glad about 2,000 years ago, he was born upon this earth, placed in a manger, grew up among men. And for 33 and a half years, he walked around yonder in the Middle East, performed miracles, helped people, Finally, they nailed him to an old rugged cross. He shed God's blood. They took that body down from that cross and placed it in, in Joseph's new tomb. And there, after three days and three nights, he came out of that grave. And then after 40 days and 40 nights, he went back to heaven. He's now at the right hand of God the Father, getting ready to come back again. And we do know it's a point under men wants to die, and after that the judgment. He that hath the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Thank you. You listen well. God bless you. I hope every one of you will have a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, we thank you for Jesus, our Savior. Thank you he was born 2,000 years ago. He lives in the hearts of many dear people on the earth today. If there's anyone here lost and without God, I pray that you speak to their hearts that might come to know him. Lord, save somebody in the radio listening audience today and speak to many hearts. Have you in this invitation? I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Debbie's going to play for us on the organ, and while she plays, if you're here without the Lord, or if you're backslidden on God, if you want to join this church, you may come, and we'll help you if you walk down the aisle. Will you do it while we wait? Anyone like to come forward for salvation, rededication, or join the church while we wait?